while we are all restricted in our movements and our ability to work in the plant due to the coronavirus, I thought I would bring you these 10 short videos on subjects of general interest to people who work in refineries. I hope you'll find these useful. And again, as always, if you have any questions about process problems, please send me an email with an appropriate process sketch. And without any charge, I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you. I was teaching a seminar in Cartagena in Colombia in South America and one of the students came over to me after one of the sessions and said, Mr. Liebman, we'd like to have you review a letter we're writing to Forster Wheeler. We need them to review our calculation procedure to calculate the draft that we're developing in our crude heater below the bottom row of convective tubes. We lack draft in the heater in the sense that we're blowing hot flue gas out of the heater below the bottom row of convective tubes. He says since the fuel that's being burnt is 3% fuel oil, 3% sulfur fuel oil, the evolved fumes are rich in sulfur dioxide, which is very dangerous. Therefore, we are not allowed to run with a negative draft or a positive pressure below the bottom row of convective tubes as a safety item. And since we lack draft, and since the stack damper is wide open, the only way we can get more draft is to diminish the fuel gas firing rate. But as we diminish the fuel gas firing rate, we have to cut back on crew. Is Mr. Liebman, what we would like you to do is review this letter we're writing to Forster Wheeler. We're offering them an engineering fee of $10,000 US to review our engineering calculations to try to understand why we are at a draft. We don't speak good English here, so we simply need someone to check the grammar of our letter. Well, I read through the letter, and the first thing that occurred to me was, maybe there's another way to approach this problem, rather than writing a letter asking for help from Forster Wheeler, a famous American engineering company in New Jersey. So what I decided to do is to go out and measure the draft myself. Now, as to measure draft, I typically just take a bottle of water and a piece of plastic tubing, insert the tubing at some point where I want to check the draft, and see how far the water is drawn up through the tubing. The level of water that is sucked up in the tubing is inches of water draft. And just as they suggest, when I go out and I measure the draft below the bottom row of convective tubes, I measure a draft of zero, zero. Well, they're limited by draft, so that does not surprise me. And now I compare the observed draft against the calculated draft. If you work with me, if you listen to my seminars, guys, this is what I always do. I have spent my entire career doing two things, making field measurements and then comparing the observed field measurement against the calculated variable. How does one calculate draft? Draft is a function of two factors. One is the temperature difference between the 70 degree ambient air temperature and the 600 degree stack temperature. Density of flue gas varies linearly with the temperature difference between the ambient air and the flue gas if we express those temperatures in degrees Rankine or degrees Kelvin on an absolute temperature basis. 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit converted to degrees Rankine is 530 degrees Rankine. 600 degrees stack temperature converted to degrees Rankine is 1060 degrees Rankine. This is proportional to the density difference between the cold ambient air and the hot flue gas. 
kindly observe that in this calculation, I am ignoring the difference in molecular weight between the flue gas and the ambient air. It's all the same. It's basically nitrogen. Okay, so this represents this delta T is proportional to the pressure difference, which then says that the density of cold air is dropped in half from 0.076 pounds per cubic foot to 0.038 pounds per cubic foot. That's the density difference in pounds per cubic foot times the 100 foot height of the stack gives me the draft in pounds per square foot, which is fine, except you all expect the draft to be expressed in the ordinary way of inches of water. So the rest is just conversion of units. Again, this is the density difference of the cold air as compared to the hot flue gas, corrected for temperature, times the height of the stack. And I now divide that by 144 square inches per square foot to get pounds per square inch and to convert PSI, pounds per square inch, to inches of water, I multiply by 28. And that gives me a measured draft of 0 0.76 inches of water. So the draft here should read 0. Point, should read 0 0.76 inches of water, but it does read zero. Something is wrong. Again, please observe my method. I'm comparing a calculated variable, 0.076, against an observed variable, 0 0.00. And when they don't agree, I ask myself the critical question, why? Well, the first thing that would occur to everyone who's listening to me talk is the stack damper is not open. But the stack damper, I could see the pointer from where I stand, is pointing straight up. But this could not be. My calculations are correct, but my field observations are also correct. And I know they're both correct because I did it myself. So something is wrong. So what I do is I get a lift that takes me up to the stack damper that shows the pointer on the damper pointing straight up. And I take a great big wrench and I twist the pointer. And it goes from straight up to mostly closed. And as I twist the pointer with this great big wrench, the draft here goes from 0 0.00, no draft, a draft limit situation, to about point, to about 0 0.76 inches of water. The shaft had become loose in the pointer, and that was their whole problem. I was very proud of my success on this, because my client in Columbia could immediately restore crude rate without spending the $10,000 for Forster Wheeler. And whenever I was very proud, I always would tell my mother about it. I went to tell my mother, may she now rest in peace, as to what I had done, thinking she would say, good work, son. But when I told my mother about this, you know what she said? Just, but how about the $10,000?